Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be making this project. This project is a color picker. It allows us to enter values of red, green, and blue and see it represented in a square. First things first, we need to set up a project. Create a new project called Color Picker. Put it wherever you're putting your projects currently. Next, we need an index file, a script file, and a style file. In our index.html file, we'll need to put the basic HTML5 boilerplate. We'll also need to include the, our other two files. Our CSS file, like so. A script file like this. Now that they're imported, we'll be able to use both of these files inside of our project. Next, we'll need to start thinking about what exactly we want to do with our project. Well, we want a color picker. This color picker will, as we saw earlier, have various inputs and a square that shows us the color. First things first, I think I want a, a container for the form. Identify it so we can style it or just to keep our code organized. Here we're going to use a class. You generally want to use classes for containers. And next, I want a div. For the color box. Since we're going to be affecting three values, we need three inputs one for red, one for blue, and one for green. I'm going to give each one of these their own container. This container will be for the red. And we'll give it an input type of range. Get these tags to autocomplete, I'm just hitting tab after typing the name in. Here we just need to create the inputs for the other ones. the same process. In fact, we can just copy this and paste it in. If you're going to paste anything in, be sure to double check all of your values. This can be an easy way to cause errors in your code without knowing it. For this simple and copy and paste, we just need to change the label for and the value inside the label. We should also give these inputs IDs. This will allow us to address them in JavaScript. I'm simply giving them the ID of the value that they're going to be changing. Next, we actually need the color box itself. I'm 
This will have an ID as well, so we can address it in JavaScript. We're just going to leave this empty. Let's check on our progress so far. You can either open in your file browser or click this symbol here. Looking good so far. We have our range inputs, but no square. Let's fix that problem next. Switch over to your style.css. To be able to see the square, we'll need to give it some values. We'll give it a background color. This will change it from white. So we'll be able to see it. I'm going to set these all, the RGB values to 0, 0, 0. That will make the background black. Next, we just need to give it a width and height. Let's refresh the page and see how things went. Now we can see that the box is black and it has width and height. Looking good so far. Now that we have our inputs, we just need to start addressing them in JavaScript. First things first, we need to wait for the window to completely load. Otherwise, our JavaScript will be, won't be able to affect the things that we want it to. To do this, we address the window object and set its onload function, which will fire once the window completely loads, to an anonymous function. Inside of this function, we'll call another function called a nip color picker. Don't forget your semicolons. This function here will basically serve as the initialization for our whole page, should we want to add other JavaScript to it. Now we'll define our function init color picker. It'll take no values. Next, we'll get the reference to our color box, which is this value here, by its ID that we gave it earlier. To do that, we use document, which is an object that is globally defined in your browser, dot get element by ID, which is a function that's defined inside of the document object. We pass it a string with the ID that we're referencing. If you get this error here, saying that lead is not supported by the current JavaScript version, you simply need to go into your preferences, language and frameworks, Find the selector that says ECMAScript 5.1 and change it to ECMAScript 6. Next, let's create an object that contains the references to our color picker inputs. We'll call it RGB. We'll give each one of these values a key that represents their ID. It's the same process that we use to get the reference to our color box. Separate them by commas. Now in our JavaScript, we have a reference to our color box and our inputs. But what do we need to do now? If we go back to our page, we'll see that when we change these, nothing happens. To get access to the change, we'll need to set event listeners on each one of these inputs. So let's create another function called set color picker event event listeners. It will allow you to pass in the color box reference and the RGB value inputs. Now for each one of these inputs, 
we want to add an event listener. Let's start with red. There's a function that are that is available on all objects, even ones that we define, called add event listener. There are many different types of event listeners, and you'll have to look those up in documentation to see them all. For now, we're going to use the on change. So we just reference that with a string. The second thing that we pass to this function is another function. We can define that easily using this syntax here. This right here is much like the parentheses that we put in other functions. And this arrow here is just telling JavaScript that the body of the function is contained with between these two curly braces. The only real difference between that and any other function is that we don't have the function keyword and there's no name. Next, we just want to see if this works. So let's console log the value of red. Since this is a reference to an input type, we have this attribute called value. This gets us the value back from the input. Make sure to save the file, and let's go back to our browser. Right click, and go to inspect. It should open up something that looks like this. Let's refresh the page. When we change the value of red, nothing happens. The problem that we're having here is that we didn't call our set color picker event listener function. Pass in the color box and the RGB. Save and refresh. Now you can see that the value of red is console logged. Now that we know everything is working, let's simply duplicate this for the other values. Don't forget your semicolons. If we go back, we can now see that each one now has the change event listener on it, and it is console logging out the values that they contain. So far, we've made a lot of progress. In our index.html, we have the inputs for our colors, and we have our color box here. In our JavaScript, we're able to get the references to our inputs and our color box. We're able to set events on each one of our inputs. And we've created initialization functions. In our CSS, We've created a background color for our box and given it height and width. In the next video, we'll start getting our inputs to change the background color of our box.